Important updates regarding the eviction enforcement process in Alberta took effect October 1st, 2011. Your hosts today are Kim Katz from Associated Eviction Services. Kim provides paralegal eviction services out of Edmonton. And I'm Bill Biko from albertaeviction.com. I help landlords understand the eviction process. Today, we're going to cover some of the changes to the enforcement, the different types of orders that uh, are out there right now, the positive and negative aspects of the changes, and then we're going to answer some questions about the changes and the notice of default. So to get started, uh, the orders have changed under the Residential Tenancy Act, Kim. Can you tell us how they've changed? Well, the orders have changed in the way that they are worded and uh, there are stronger p provisions made uh, that are more relevant to the Residential Tenancies Act um, and residential tenancies and they've also changed in the way that they are enforced. Okay, so there's a couple of different orders. Uh, for people who are not familiar with this, we've got uh, conditional orders and unconditional orders. Can you uh, explain a little bit about these, Kim? Well, a conditional order for possession is an order for possession that is stayed or put on hold while payments are made. An unconditional order for possession is an order for possession that orders the tenants to give up possession on a certain date without any payment conditions attached. Great. Okay, so what substantial changes have occurred in the provision of these orders? Uh, well, the most substantial uh, changes was the uh, elimination of the writ of possession as far as it pertains to unconditional orders, which only leaves us with a requirement uh, to file an affidavit of service of the order before we proceed with civil enforcement. And then where it affects uh, conditional orders, the uh, elimination of the writ of possession has taken place but we have seen the introduction of the notice of default, which is a compulsory document that has to be served before a conditional order can be enforced. And the requirements uh, prior to proceeding with civil enforcement as far as documents go is an affidavit of service of the order, a notice of default served upon the tenants, and a declaration um, or an affidavit, whatever satisfies the civil enforcement agency that you're working with, um, that has to be uh, filed as well. Okay, so just from what I see then, it sounds like uh, landlords really want to go with that unconditional order if they can get one, because it makes it a little bit easier. But uh, having understood that, can, can you go into some of the positives and negatives of this? Uh, well, the positive um, side to an unconditional order, if that is something that you can aim for, uh, is that it can be enforced in less time and is ultimately uh, less in cost to enforce. And the negative of, of a conditional order is that it there would be a delay uh, in the time that it can be enforced and that would be ultimately stipulated by the order and uh, obviously there would be an increase in time and cost to recover the premises. Okay, great stuff. Well, from here, Kim, uh, we've got a, a few questions that uh, seem to be popping up quite often now uh, as people are, are learning a little bit more of the process. So to get started, the first question we have is, what happens to orders that are already in place? Orders that are in place that may extend past the October 1, 2011 date uh, would still be enforced in the way that they were enforced before these changes took place. So you would typically still require an affidavit of default and a writ of possession before enforcement can take place, no matter what kind of order it is. Okay. So the other question that we're seeing is the notice of default, this new notice, a, a some, same as a request for payment. No, it's not a request for payment at all. In fact, the notice of default just provides the tenant with a stipulated amount of time to vacate the premises before being subject to removal by a bailiff that is retained to a civil enforcement agency. Okay, great clarification. Uh, what happens if the tenant abandons the premises and another person, the roommate or something, remains? Well, under the Residential Tenancies Act, the order has to be served on the tenant the overholding tenants or the personal persons living in the residential premises if the tenant has abandoned. The notice of default should be served in precisely the same manner. So the notice can be served Circum to 
to whoever's there. Yes, although one has to uh, cater for circumstances changing between time of service of the order and service of the notice of default, you may ultimately find a tenant there to serve in an order to, but by the time you serve a notice of default, you may just have uh, abandonment or other people living in the premises who would have to be served. Okay. All right. Here's a good one. What are the consequences to the landlord if a notice of default was not served in the time specified in the order? Well, the landlord may still exercise the right to gain possession, but would still have to serve a notice of default. And the amount of time that has passed and will be taken into consideration by any inf civil enforcement agency and will be, will be an important factor that determines whether or not the agency is prepared to enforce the order. If the civil enforcement agency is not prepared to enforce the order, the landlord may have to obtain a new order. All right. Okay. What happens if the tenant makes full payments and the landlord accepts the payment after the notice of default has been issued? Or, or after they've got the bailiff uh, process underway, or civil enforcement process? Well, if payment is accepted, the notice of default is rescinded, and the tenancy continues in accordance with the order. In the event of further future payment default, the landlord would have to serve a new notice of default, and may have to convince the civil enforcement agency of the validity of the enforcement. Excellent. Well, as, as Kim has pointed out here, this is uh, evolving and there, there may be changes or new interpretations on this. So if you need more information, we recommend that you visit us at evictionservices.ca or albertaeviction.com. Alternatively, uh, you can also visit a special page I've set up at albertaeviction.com slash Kim and register to automatically receive our updates as we find out more information and can pass it on to you. We thank you very much for your time. Kim, I thank you for your time and explaining a lot of this to us. Thank you.